parenting is an epic journey of highs <laughs> and lows. Therapy can help you navigate it all and take care of yourself so you can be the best parent possible. And BetterHelp makes it easy. Complete a brief questionnaire, match with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. 100% online and designed for maximum flexibility. Get started at betterhelp.com forward slash parenthood for 10% off the first month. Weddings are a celebration of finding the perfect fit. And with Indochino, you can design a custom suit made to your measurements. Go to indochino.com and use code podcast for 10% off any order of $3.99 or more. Hello, Egg Chasers. It's the Egg Chasers Rugby Podcast, the podcast about rugby that doesn't take itself or the game too seriously. Here to talk about the England game. I'm Tim, that's Phil. Hello, Tim. And that, that and that's JB. Hi, guys. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's... It, it's I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even mad anymore. I'm not even angry. Yeah. Uh, right. But this may be the first episode you're listening to in our feed of the two that we're releasing. If that is the case, we started talking about the other rugby and took so long to get to England, and the other stuff just seemed a little bit. The, the England story just seems a little bit separate and isolated. Well, most of our listeners are English. Well, this is true. We cover English rugby. We, we watch the Premiership. This is our expertise now. Mm. This is what we're good at. This is our home team, if you like, in, in the sense of what we know and who we know. So, yes. Here, and, and for you and I, Tim, it is our home team. We we genuinely yeah. want England to win. Yeah. I was I was having this chat the other day, actually. I... I do regard myself as a rug, absolutely as a rugby fan before an England fan, which I'm not sure which that was feels up, Tim. which feels like a lame thing to say when I say it. But it's also the same reason why I, I don't have a team, a club team. And, pe- <coughs> and people well, he believe- did. It went bankrupt. Well, no, I, ha- <laughs> kind I, have, of. I have a soft spot yeah. for London. I had, uh, I, ha- I have had a soft spot for London Irish. Always have because my brother played for them, but. Um, but I never had a team which I would go and buy a jersey or go to a game and be a supporter and feel anxious when they played anything like that. Uh, so, but I mean, people don't. Be- a lot of people didn't believe that that was the case. They thought I was just saying it because I worked in rugby. But it's true. No, it is true. I actually, I'll, I'll back you up on that. It's one hundred percent true. But I, so for the same reason, I, I, I do. And it sounds so lame when I say it, but I am a rugby fan first. I don't know. Does, do you recognise what I mean with I, that, Phil? I do. No, I would probably phrase it a bit differently. I will watch. Any rugby game, pretty much. Yeah, I, that's fair. Almost any rugby game I will watch, um, particularly any international rugby game. Um, but I, I am an England fan. Like yeah. I genuinely, I, I, there's almost no other game. Like I'll watch. I don't. JB would be particularly invested if he was watching New Zealand South Africa. You would always want the box to win. Always. Whereas always. I, w- I will watch that game, and. I don't mind who wins at what, all. What, what like about I, France, I'll, France, South Africa, because you love France. I, I, I just love. I, I mean, I would support France in that. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I would support France. Was I, I would just want to. I want it to be a good, ga- good game, close with the last ten minutes. I want it to be on a knife edge, so either team can win in that scenario. If England are playing, I one hundred percent want England to so, win. And most of the time, I want England to win because I, I support the players rather than else. Mm. So, like, yeah, I, you know, I, I've. I'll give you an example. I've interviewed Courtney Laws, say. So I, if Courtney Laws is playing, I desperately want him to win because you, know, you kind of know the guy and you root for the guy. Um, so because we do a lot of premiership rugby, we know a few pre- pre- premiership players, we've interviewed a few, you want those guys to do well. And also you see them on the TV every, every week. You know, you're invested yeah. in their stories, you're invested in, in, in their careers, you want them to go well. But in this case, the overriding narrative for me is... I think England rugby has to burn itself down before it's going to get any better. Because mm. this is bad, boys. It is bad. And it, and it is bad. And, and you've gone on at length about the damage from the RFU to the grassroots game, which we don't need to go on about now. Oh, we do, because it's all... But, well, there's, there's, there's dozens of hours of content on that. Yeah. Um, oh, no, and there'll be a few dozen more to come. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just bad now. This is... Uh, well, do you know where what, do you even start? I, okay, this the whole blame for this, right? It's not the players, 
It's not Steve Porter. Now, they do have a bit of blame, right? They do have a bit of blame. They were on the field. They are the coaching team. There's a bit of blame to go in there. But the ultimate blame has to come down to one man. It comes down to one man only, and it's Bill Sweeney. There is nobody else. Now, Bill Sweeney, I, I mentioned this when Eddie Jones got fired and also when Warren Gatlin got appointed. Is he chief, chief exec or chairman? Or chief exec of the Chief, uh, the chief exec, yeah. Now, this guy is paid six hundred to seven hundred thousand pounds a year. Get, well, they got quite a substantial pay rise. He's got recently. a substantial pay rise. This is outrageous, actually, because this man, um, it, actually, in the conversation that he had with me, right, in the conversation he had with me, he was bragging that during COVID, not a single grassroots club went bankrupt. All right, this was his brag, and I thought, well, okay, well, I mean, it sounds kind of like the minimum standard to me. <laughs> now we fast forward twelve. Uh, Maybe two two years since we had that conversation. Um, I wonder if he'd still be bragging about grassroots clubs now, because under his watch, there's three professional clubs that have gone under now. So you can't have it both ways. Well, I mean, now, pre- pre- are the RF uh, yeah, we don't. We, let's not go down that now, rabbit hole because the RFU doesn't run Premiership rugby. Yeah. So yes, there's. But no, I no, 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 no. But they do regulate it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Let, let's not go. Let's not. Let's so not go you've there. got three strands. You've got professional let's game. You've got international game, and you've got grassroots game. But the international game. This is the one, right? So I said this, that what Bill Sweeney was involved with when he fired Eddie Jones at the wrong time, because I wanted Eddie Jones to go much sooner b- before that. Yeah, you wouldn't have reappointed him after 2019. Nope. You would have got rid of him in 2018, in yeah, fact. I, I would have. And even after 2019, you wouldn't have. No, nope. he, he would have gone, because that's the sort of time you need, need for a new coach. What he did, like he has in his entire tenure for the RFU, he has recklessly gambled the future of English rugby. The the game which he does not own, but he is the custodian of. So the World Cup was so important to Bill Sweeney because it will justify all of his previous malfeasance within the role. It will justify what he's done to the grassroots game. It will justify what he's done to the pro game. And more importantly, it's going to justify the fact that he spent the best part of two million quid of members' money, of clubs' money, sacking Eddie Jones... And then appointing Steve Borthwick. That is and, absolutely insane. And Steve Borthwick's team and Eddie Jones' team out and Borthwick's yeah. team in. The amount of money that was spent doing this for the results that, that they've got, I mean, we, we can't forget this. So close to a World Cup. Had it right. Uh, so we never know the counterfactual, because I don't disagree with you, uh, and I'm not trying to disagree with you, I'm just trying to balance it up. Had he not fired Eddie Jones and saved that £2 million... There's every chance we'd be sat here going, I cannot believe he didn't fire Eddie Jones and put Steve Borthwick in when it was talked about and they had that meeting back in December. Yeah. But, but it's, it is the, there is a key timing thing here. Oh, I totally yeah. agree. The, the, I totally the timing agree with is you. the most... Like, you've either got to do it early or not at all. And, yeah. he, and he, he did it. And I, I'm on record as saying... I probably still wouldn't have fired Eddie Jones. Because you were. I, 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 it's weird. J- JB's been on it since 2018. Yeah, down get four. Rid, get, get rid of Eddie Jones, down four, etc. I, I was I was a staunch Eddie advocate and backer until that South Africa game last autumn, <coughs> and I regret that change of heart. Now, Phil, fair play, was like, now's not the right time. But, they, but they, yeah, it wasn't the right time. It definitely wasn't. And that, that has been borne out, because I think we all like Borthwick as a, as a coach and as, as a bloke. Um, but it's it's been proven. To, now they they might have been even worse under Eddie Jones. Might have been. May yeah. have been. I mean, they might it, have been. It's, I don't know. Is the answer? I, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't actually think they would but, have been. I mean, the point we need. I, the point I want to drive home to every single listener that's listening to this now, right, is Bill Sweeney's recklessness with the game, and we have to remember this because his 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 tenure in this role is coming to an end. It just is. It, 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 he cannot continue to do this. And what I find most egregious about Bill Sweeney is he's used our game to feather his own nest, both with his enormous salary, with absolutely nothing to show for it, with possibly the worst record of any CEO in almost any sport. I'll, and that, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. They've had financial mismanagement that means that the RFU may well have to sell a stake of itself to private equity just to s- sustain no, itself. No, it has. Well, it's, it has, it's sold it to CVC. But that was the Six Nations, not, Six Nations. not the RFU. Not, not the oh, RFU. Sorry, yeah, yeah, the yeah, actual yeah, RFU yeah. organisation may have to, um, but it it had massive losses, overspent on the stand, uh, various other things, and how did it save money? With swinging cuts to community coaches, yeah. which is a short-term 
patch up that has massive Down, long-term yeah, downstream downstream consequences. consequences, which I actually think is part of. Well, we haven't even seen the consequences of that yet. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think the. I, I did a video on, on on the YouTube channel, which I think you'd like, JB, and it actually tracks back to 1995, and the RFU were at fault then because they delayed and dillied and dallied and didn't take control of the game when it turned professional, and as a result, these private individuals came in and the structure we now have and everything I think we're now seeing is downstream of here. And the way I've made sense of it is we have been on a, a gradual decline with little peaks, little dip, sudden cliff edge drops, and then occasional rises but the trend has been down from 2003 yeah. over 20 years to where we are now and actually the way i make sense of that is the, the way i make sense of that is eddie jones massively outperformed the trajectory that england are on mm. he's, he's, still, interesting he's still he's still he's england's most successful coach in terms of win win percentage he, he even, so even in spite with... in spite of the inevitable decline for all of the forces and all of the mismanagement eddie jones managed somehow to have an uplift that took us above that line. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I just want to ram this and, home and to, the, yeah. to, to the listeners. The gamble, the reason that the that Jones was fired and Borthwick was appointed was a gamble. And the, oh, uh, to, total gamble. Yeah. And the WRU did the same thing. Because this for, this, this for Sweeney is the big stand here, which is he is going to gamble your sports, your club, uh, you know, everything that you love about this game in order to try and save his job because if England were to be successful and him to win he could cover up everything that he's done wrong everything he's done wrong and you know what really annoys me the most there are I, I'm sorry I am going off on a tangent here but there are shades of the Nat West boss Alison Rose here so the reason I say that is that Alison Rose's number one job was to be a banker and at the first opportunity she broke the first tenant of banking which is um, client conf- confidentiality to push her Push her own agenda. Bill Sweeney will leave this job, and when he leaves this job, he will use our game to feather his nest even further. And he will point to, well, look what I've done with the women. Look what I've done with this. Look, look what I've done with diversity. Look what I've, all the things which abs- make absolutely no difference to your to, uh, uh, to to your club. In fact, he's got to take even more money away from the game in order to fund these pet projects of his. This is what he's up to. Because that, this is how he sells himself next. Exactly the same, the same as Alison Rose. These people fail upwards continuously. And I was thinking about this. So I thought, like, let's think of another person in sport who failed miserably. And where do they go? Remember Raylene Castle for um, <laughs> Australia? Rugby Australia. Rugby Australia. Rugby Australia. Um, absolutely abysmal job with the Australia team. Probably best known for her low-level racism in relation to is to Israel Folau and excluding one of... Is- Which other other people would assess differently, but fine. That's well, the, then, yeah, that, that's your, that's your assess, take on it. No, no, I know, I'm just... They're um, wrong, and they're okay. probably bigots, too. Um, <laughs> oh, Jay, mate, there's no need. There's no need. You can, ma- you can make the same point without deliberately ruffling feathers. Okay, well, they're not bigots, but they definitely are. Um... <laughs> I, and where did she go? She failed upwards to be the head of all of New Zealand sports, which is quite incredible. All right, so Bill Sweeney will fail upwards again. And just remember, it is all on your money, all on your sport. He's just used this sport in order to enrich himself. And you've got to remember that. So now we can get on to Borthwick and the England team. Well, I'm glad when, when you talked about it that uh, this is something I've been saying for a little while now. Personnel is irrelevant. And I was talking about personnel being irrelevant in the context of the system that Steve Borthwick was playing. Who cares whether you're playing George Ford, Owen Farrell or Marcus Smith when you're playing that style of rugby? Uh, But uh, I think it's maybe even bigger than that. The personnel's irrelevant because the temptation here is to go into a conversation about, oh, you should get this player in. Oh, if you only got this player in. Oh, if Zach Mercer was in and this player was in, it would be totally different. I just just, just cannot buy that. No, no. It's it's like rotten. Well, it's simultaneously relevant and irrelevant. So it's irrelevant in terms of the players England have available to them. But it's very relevant in terms of the players England do not have available to them. So, like, if you want to execute this game, you need unbelievable South African-style ball carriers going up the middle. And they just don't have that. So, in that yeah, respect, it's, you are right. It's irrelevant which of the yeah, non- yeah. South African ball carriers that you pick because you don't have them. Yeah, it, it is a pointless conversation to, to do that. Like, it, the... the and <laughs> There is a degree of this where I think 
even if um, the England coaching setup that you currently have had access to the pick of the world players, they could pick the best pack in the world. They could pick the best kicking nine in the world, pick Aaron Smith or whoever you um, otherwise believe is the best kicking nine in the world. Pick the best back line to a, a best kick chasing wingers, most aggressive centres. I don't think it actually matters because this team is so bad yeah. and playing so badly. And I, I was having an interesting conversation with my father-in-law watching this game. And he's saying, well, Borthwick's a good guy, isn't he? He's a good coach. And I was like, yeah, I th- I'm sure he is. He's a bit inexperienced in the head coach role, but he's got a fantastic CV. His rugby brain, I think most people would agree, is second to none. As a player, he was a master tactician, and as a coach, he's earned his stripes through multiple different roles. And then he's, my father-in-law said, and the guys around him, they're, they're all like Sinfield, Wigglesworth, they're, they're really good guys, aren't they? And I was like, yes, but those two particularly... So someone like Alad Walters has won a World Cup and everyone raves about him. Mm. Um, so I've, and, and ultimately he's a, a fitness coach, so as long as the conditioning is in the right ballpark... yeah. And I know he does more than just But can I just tell you something about Alan but, Walters? Just a, a real interesting snippet. If you were to ask Steve Borthwick who his best coach is in all of Leic- Leicester Tigers, in fact, if he, including himself, he would say uh, 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 Alan mm, Walters. Interesting. Which is unusual, isn't it, for a fitness guy? Yeah, and maybe, maybe that says something to the point that I'm about to make. Oh, dear. Which, which is when he said, like, oh, um, Sinfield and Wigglesworth, like, they're, they're brilliant, they're... They're like leaders and heroes, and all I was like, yes, but they're so inexperienced. They're so inexperienced at, at club game. Like they, they now have a good CV because they've, in a few years, got Leicester to win the league. But that is the extent of their CV. It is. That is literally the entire extent of their CV. And so there's there's that part to it, and combine that with the fact that Sinfield. Is a, a legend what, what you, for the work he does outside the space. He's a legend in rugby league anyway because he's one of the all-time greats. And for the and for the work he does outside, he's an absolute legend. And Wiggy, similarly, he's a very likable bloke. He was a very very talented player and has won everything in the game. Six titles, yeah, Premiership titles plus Champions Cup yep. titles plus uh, however many England caps. Uh, maybe not as many as he should have done, but still got them over an, an enormous length of time, probably like 15 years from his first to his last England caps. Um, and maybe that's something that you've got these guys who are held in such high, high esteem and such high regard for stuff that is unrelated to their coaching ability, and perhaps their coaching ability is just sadly lacking, that if if they said, oh... Your defensive structure is everyone's got to look back at their try line, and everyone would nod and say, "Yeah, we'll do it for you, Sir Kev." And they, they're just being—they're just leading because of who they are as individuals. They're leading the players down the garden. There's path. no questioning, is there? Like I've never ever heard a member of the press until maybe today with Charlie Morgan um, questioning Kevin Sinfield. And I think that is a little bit worrying because yeah. he's unquestionable because. Of all the good work well, he's done. Uh, gradually, over the last few weeks, people have been just talking about the lack of tries and the number of tries conceded. Yeah. Yeah. Lack of, tries being, a lot. lack of tries being a wiggy thing, number of tries being conceded w- a Sir Kev thing. Well, I'd like to point out something else, really, and it again links to something which I said in previous weeks. But when Steve Borthwick took his first head coaching role at Leicester Tigers, one of my biggest criticisms of him, and I hated what he did. I mean, still to this day, I, I think it's a stain against him. Is this so relevant to England? No, no, I'm just saying it well, randomly. Then, well, <laughs> of course, no, it's no. relevant to England. Oh, okay, yeah, what sorry. do you think I'm doing? Sorry. I'm doing a podcast <laughs> about England, okay. right? So, I, I, I still think it's, it's, it's bad to this day. Is he cost a lot of players a lot of jobs and a lot of reputations by just seeing who works, seeing, seeing who doesn't? Players who, in a different system with a bit more nurturing, could have pro- 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 probably made it. But the upshot of that is he found great talents like Freddie Stewart and yada yada yada, and we know the rest of the, um, like we know the rest of that. It feels to me that when he was appointed the England coach, he didn't have th- that same confidence. Like he didn't go through a load of players. We spoke uh, the last mm. podcast, was it? 
about how many players Eddie Jones used in his England camp. Well, Eddie got lambasted for that by you as much as anyone. Well, I would say... Well, hang on. The ones which I didn't like were the politically driven ones, and we can all agree now they were politically driven. Well, we can't, we can't agree. I, I wouldn't. I'm not, not so sure. No, uh, you, some you, more. So, some more is an some oddity. More. It doesn't, get, it doesn't necessarily you can't mean... Motive. You can't guess what the motive was. I'm not guessing. It's, it's all, it, we all know what the motive was. They didn't want I, English qualified players playing for Scotland and Wales. That's what I, it was. I, I'm still not... Gary Graham? Gary Graham was Gary, told... G- Gary Graham was told by Eddie Jones, you're not my selection. What do you reckon the motive was, boys? Uh, Come Eddie on, jo- what was the motive? So Eddie Jones says a lot of things. Eddie, Eddie Jones says, have a beer, mate. He, right. when, he, when he doesn't mean have a beer, mate. <laughs> OK, so Eddie Jones selected him, but then told him that he wasn't his selection. Uh, you know, they, they told... Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. The, the point I was making is that maybe England need a bit more of the New Zealand one or two cap players, where you just get lads in for one or two caps, just see if they can do it. In my mind, this England team is very stagnant, very lazy. I've said all, all of that previously. But I just want to know, like, where was that Steve Borthwick that came into Leicester who went through every player possible to well, find out who works. He, he had the time, We're going back yeah. to the previous point, he had but, the time. There was, but, there, there was the year with no relegation. Yes. But this is the thing, right, Tim? He's been appointed and everybody asta- understands with this limited amount of time to the World Cup, right, he has a f- completely free shot. It, it almost exactly the same. Yeah, but he also doesn't have the luxury of being able to pick or go through all those players because he had, like, nine games in total. Well, when he took over from when he's... You would say he's in a very similar situation to his predecessor, Eddie Jones, who has done exactly that with Australia. He's gone to Australia and he's left like big names out and he's reinvented it because he knows he's got a free hit. Like I, I think if he was a bit more savvy, he would look back at what he's done and go, actually, let's just start again. Let's see who we can find. Let's, let, let's rebuild it from scratch. Because so, you even said yourself in the last podcast... You feel better about Australia because that's a young oh, improvement totally. team. Oh, no, I, I, I actually agree. But this, this, again, comes back to the point of personnel. It's the system that he plays. I don't think it matters which English players he picks in the system that he operates for the reason that you just said. Because you know, And I think, actually, the bigger picture here of this is partly Steve Borth, this is partly England, England rugby in general, is the Premiership is a shadow of what it was five years 100%. ago. 100%. And therefore, what looks like... And what worked with Leicester Tigers will not work on the international stage and what is controllable and achievable with these players in a premiership context you 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 cannot deliver and England do not have the players to they don't have a load of meatheads props that are going to muller you in the scrums no they do not yeah who no, will be the next not. cab off the rank yeah. in the props so i don't Joe, exactly. Joe Hayes so, and so you're going like Patrick oh yeah Schickling. Trevor Davis Trevor Davis will Collier and, Harry yeah, Williams. you're not going like try them, Trevor Davison yeah, and, uh, and um, most of those guys have been tried. Yeah. A, a lot Val, of these guys have Val, been. Paul Ruskin. Yeah, well, loosehead's less of a problem. Yeah. Tighthead is a bigger problem. T- well, no, I think loosehead's a big problem though, because you know, watching this this game of the weekend, I, I just think every oh, everybody. I mean, that, but, did, but the whole team see, is a problem. Did, did you see that Genge tweet? But by, by the way, yeah, I thought well, that I'm was not, tone, I thought I was tone deaf. I mean, I've not seen it. The guy, uh, as I keep on saying, he's a good Premiership player. He's a good carrier for a prop, but an average carrier for an international, or maybe a good to average carrier. But it allows him to be an underpowered, undersized prop. Well, I think he's been. Eddie Jones used him like in a scout Brits way as a kick returner at one point. He was against good, France. Against France, it was, it was quite Which fun. Was, that was unusual. He, it was quite good fun, that. Uh, just one point on the changes. Uh, Borthwick's actually spoken about this. He can't. Because you can only change five players in the elite squad for yeah, the time. Yeah, that's true, yeah. actually. That is a good point. That like, is a good point. You actually can't. And w- one of the... F- it's kind of a frustration um, is he's done, like, a microcosm of it in certain positions. Like, the centres... We've hardly seen the same centre pairing twice. Mm. Like, the centre pairings have just been rotated... And it's the same personnel, though, isn't it? But it's, it's the same personnel, yeah. just in different positions with different people yeah. alongside them. And that's one of the, I think, centre partnerships, because they're so integral to your defensive structure mm. and getting your attack going, which are the two big things that England have been unable to do, see earlier points, that it, you need some consistency there. So even if you change loads of other things, getting that would getting that solid would actually be a I benefit. I don't think England take the international game as seriously as they, as they should do. And I think this runs across the, R- the RFU. I'll give you two examples. 
There was the women's game in Newcastle or Huddles, uh, sorry, Huddlesfield in the northeast to say goodbye to Sarah Hunter. Um, Sarah Hunter was a magnificent player for England, but nobody deserves. In the middle, of, and it was like halfway through. The yeah, six nobody. Nations. You should never ever. You know, the, the team and the game is bigger than any player. You know, uh, they 100%. did. Uh, Wales did it for Alan Wynne Jones, a send off for him. No, the answer is no. Yeah, like you're even, good enough or you're not good enough, and that's why it's special. Even Italy did not do it for Parisi. Yeah. That, that, because that's it, what happens. Yeah, it's brutal. It, it, it is, pre say, one of the most capped players of all time. One of the best, best, and certainly probably the best Italian player of all time. Yeah. Didn't get a send-off. Get a send-off. Yeah. So, and England men's did it against Wales in the millennium. Uh, to, as a, Allegedly, as a thank you for those that showed up. So, it's not a thank you squad, right? <laughs> Judging by how you've gone, you needed every single second uh, with these players to get better. And you gave away a valuable international cap as a thank you. Are you mad? Like, there is something about England rugby which just doesn't... It simultaneously takes the game very seriously, which is why you've got this crazy um, difference between players in premiership squads who are internationals with double the pay of so uh, Tom Curry and Ben Curry right almost identical players they are identical players right one is worth probably double the pay of, 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 what, of, one of is, the other I, I, I would dare to say that one has earned probably four or five times more than the <laughs> yeah. other and now that injuries play a large part in that yeah. uh, you, you know you've got the situation where it, once you're in the England squad it's very hard to get out of the England squad. It's very hard to get in. And Once you're in the hard. elite squad, yeah, yeah, it's part, just partly for the, f- the reason. Well, yeah. I know a big part of it. The reason Phil mentioned, yeah, yeah, and on top of that, they're just not taking it seriously enough. You don't waste international caps, and you don't give them away as thank yous. That to me, it's disrespectful to the game. It's disrespectful well, to, to, to the cap, England, and it's an RFU yeah, problem. No, I, I get that. England had four warm-up games where most country Ireland had two. Yeah, but tell you what, it looks so, like they so, needed them. Well, yes, yes, it does. But for the first one, going, I'm going to play my backup players. I don't see that as a as a major issue. I don't see that as going. I'm giving you a thank you. No, no, that was literally what it's. No, no. Now it seems like you could have done with the time together. But and then no, really no just... one was saying this. No, uh, nobody, no, no one was really saying this when the na- team was announced. That uh, no, but after uh, basically <laughs> after yeah. the game yeah. when we recorded on the Sunday, the day after, yeah. we all said. It looked like a yeah. Thank you. Was, yeah, they weren't. They, they yeah. just weren't a send off. So basically, you look the, at the Ireland. decision was already made. Yeah. Ireland only announced their squad yesterday, yeah. right? Like this, is another Steve Borthwick er- um, error to me, which is why announce it. I mean, this again it just shows how comfortable that they are. I mean, they've been so bad, but they're safe. Well, yeah, they're, they're yeah. safe. Yeah, yeah. I get that, and that came from the players apparently. Who cares? Yeah. Don't yeah. 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 No, not yeah. here. I yeah. said this before. I agree. I agree. That, that, I agree. I blow my lid. If totally so. agree. Yeah. It, it hey, hey boss, that. can you announce? Can you announce the team early so I'm more secure? Get out! No, and you're no, leave. <laughs> not here. Leave completely, <laughs> completely from the players. It's not their team. So, oh. one of the points you, you kind of hinted at before, um, which is Charlie Morgan. Charlie Morgan wrote a great article yesterday on. He's written two good articles. Um, oh last yes, couple of days. yes. You tease us in, in my kitchen. Go on. So the first one was basically. Um, saying the defence is not good enough and here are some of the observations um, and Sir Kev's systems are not working um, and some of his observations were very similar to ones that I'd made and the, the thing I would point out was would be uh, two of the tries plus the disallowed tries were all total failures, like fundamental failures to get guards into position at Rooks yeah. Ben, Earl, ben Earl for the pick and go from the number 14 was one Dan Cole so that was Ben, ben Earl one was Johnny May on the right wing where Johnny May Courtney Laws hits the Rook and Johnny May is what should be the guard and Johnny May just jogs out to his wing really? and the ball is offloaded oh and there's this there's like a five metre hole two yards from his own try line because he just jogged out to his wing instead of being he was the first man on the blind side he should have been the guard did you see the one where the, oh, the, yeah, the disallowed try the disallowed try was Genge hits the rook leaving an enormous guy did, the so rook that's already won so it's Chesham it's Chesham it? it's on the inside and of Chesham, then it's Manu then so it was Cole no, so it was it, yeah, but, sorry really outside is, outside to the point. outside Chesham was Manu it was Chesham. Um, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. inside, 
inside was Genge. He hits the rook and creates the gap. But the, he hits the rook, which should have meant that Chesham and Manu step in. And they Genge, the rook was already lost, so Genge shouldn't have hit. But, but then you Chesham also have Cole chasing on the back of the rook, and he's all yeah. Already, but he'd come from the blind, the yeah. other side. But he was never getting there. No, well, he wasn't running for a start, yeah. and he never <laughs> intended to run, even when the yeah. break, break was made. But those three. And that's that's two of the tries and one of the disallowed tries, which I thought was a little... Hands did go forward, a little bit harsh. Um, but they are just like... They're schoolboy errors in failing to identify the risk around the rook and failing to just say, your first man, regardless of whether you're Johnny May or Alex Mitchell or Ellis Genge, you have to be that guard and you have to set the... You know- well, as you say, because you say it's schoolboy errors then this is where I would have a bit of sympathy for Kevin Simfield because there was also just missed 27 missed tackles by England in that game. That's not a defensive system. Failure. No, well, 20, 27's that, that, not that. I don't, don't know the tackle, the total number, but let's say it's 150. Yeah. You're talking... Uh, Nearly 30%. Uh, uh, no. Um, uh, sorry, uh, 25% nearly. 30 yeah, twenty percent. Thirty, out of 30 would be twenty percent. Twenty percent. So, yeah. yeah, you're talking. So you're talking eighty. Let's call it eighty-two percent. Which against Fiji is probably not a bad. It's, it's, okay. It should be. It should be okay. better than that. I don't. There, there think, were I some. There were some. some there were some poor ones. Yeah. I I think there's. I think you're exactly right. You have to split it into. Yeah. Coachable area. like. Kevin Sinfield should not... Uh, I mean, he's had to with Owen Farrell in his team, but he should not be working on basic, like, one-on-one tackle technique. And He should, he not, should be working no, on systems. And, and the, the Broughton Park under-16s uh, know that when there's a breakdown, you get a guard either side. Yeah. These are international rugby players, that's not Kevin Sinfield's that's job. That's exactly what I was about but, to say to him. Like, it baffles me, as a coach and as a player, that I'd run away from a rock. Well, and this is why, because it hap- cause it's happening, it's... It is as if it's a system thing. Right. It's happening repeatedly. You, it's not a priority in that system, but it should be a priority in almost every system. Like that should be the first thing. There was um, a press conference with Steve Diamond after, after a sale game, and there was a loss uh, the week before, and then they won the week after. Of course, the loss was not Diamond's fault, but the win was completely Diamond's responsibility. <laughs> and in the press conference, he's like, "Yeah, well, we came away from that, and uh, we came away from last week, and we had to have some real strong words because some lads did not know what they were doing at the ruck, and we had to go back to basics and do guards and bodyguards again." It's like, "What? A sale shocks? Uh, like that? But that's what they did? Yeah. Like sometimes the fundamentals just break down because they're so bogged but, but, down with everything else." But I, I yeah. see that as I see it, because it is happening so frequently. It's almost like this. The system is not prioritizing the number one thing that it should be prioritizing in those situations. So there is a flaw in the system. That that's my read on it. And it might be you're exactly right. There is a plausible explanation that it's the players entirely just not understanding the system or not um, implementing the correct system. It could be that, or it could be a system error. We, we, you're right. We don't know. But that, my read, what? as I think yeah. Charlie Morgan's was. Well, was that it is more that system error. Can I tell you the more disturbing part about England's tries that they conceded? They weren't good tries. <laughs> they, they were. This is the thing with people, uh, you know, oh, the flying for Gians, all the skill. One of the tries I'm saying it was absolutely horrendous. Where Johnny May gets stood up. Yeah. And, uh, and Rand Randa throws a pass at someone's feet. Bounce pass. A bounce pass. Yeah. Yeah. Classic, 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 bounce pass. Pass. Classic, classic basketball um, skill set. The winger... Uh, the four, the fourteen, yeah. Who d- messed up for the Johnny May try? It was an almost carbon copy. Yeah. Of, they b- both did it to each other. And just, I think like this is international rugby. Like, you can't let a player at a standstill when you have got supporting tacklers with you as well go around you. You just yeah, can't do yeah, that. Yeah. Like the, the last try when that's just simple offload. It, it, it blows my that, mind. That, that was ju- that we watched that again. Johnny May, so Courtney Laws kind of hits because there's a half tackle and then the offload. When Johnny May sees that there's been this half tackle, he just jogs out to the wing instead and leaves a five metre gap two yards from his own line. Mad. He should have been the next man there in that guard position. Yeah, I, I mean, I've. Uh, I just think a mixture of apathy from the players or. Com- not apathy. I can't even describe these players. 
because I know they're good and I've seen them in the Premiership I know they're good players but, but is there any merit in what I'm saying the Premiership's just not that good yeah, there's yeah there def- is huge merit there is definitely there is huge merit in that and, and I actually think these players in the top 14 would be fine but it's that weekly it's that weekly high intensity high quality competition that still sharpening get. still correct yeah correct and, and also there's players in that team who are They've not been formed for some time, some of those players, through injuries, through age, through playing in not great teams. It's like someone like Courtney Laws, who exactly. we all love. He's a brilliant, brilliant player. We've hardly seen him for the last two, two years since the Lions. Even before the Lions, he was struggling to be fit. He doesn't look He doesn't look like old Courtney to me. Does any play, well, okay, Man, so Manu is another great example. Manu's does, not, does big, Manu is that, is not that, anywhere near this team. No, um, um, yeah, Maru Itoji. Itoji is a Itoji yeah. is a good shout. Completely vanished. It's Itoji, and Itoji gets away with a lot because he's got such amazing like game tape of him just doing things that almost no other player in the world would do. When was the last time you saw Maru do something? That, he looks pedestrian. Yeah, totally it's uninterested. But it, it's then like to, and I don't necessarily want to have this conversation in huge depth, but. The point that you made before, Tim, which was right, which was there is no one else to get in. Like they just don't have them available. Like, if you were going to get rid of Marrow, who do you bring in? Well, Johnny Hill, yeah. David Ribbons, but, I, like, but they're, they're not playing. Like neither of those are playing well. So this is where I'm. Thinking. Alex Coles. Yeah, is you know. it is it a, a case of um, the lost the dressing room type thing that these players are don't they don't believe in it? And you understand, like at that level, a few percent off. Has, it gets magnified. It's, it's your your analogy with the setting out from port yeah. at a one degree gap. Fine, yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah. But, you like know, that. at the elite level, that it makes a big difference. And I just think it do might you know the, it um, might be that they, they didn't believe in what Eddie was doing. And they don't believe in what Steve Borthwick was doing. Well, do you know like the I don't know if this is a tale, but like the theory about peacetime generals, <laughs> peacetime number eights, peacetime number eights. Yeah. Well, so like you, you go to war with your um, generals, with your general staff, and, and whatnot. And within like three weeks, you fired them all, and then you fired the next lot, and then you fired the next lot. So, you know, take World War II. Take any conflict; they pretty much chew through generals at uh, you know a, a massive pace until they finally find one that sticks. And most of those in World War Two were the World War One guys, yeah. the guys who are now sixty-five years so, old. You, know, you finally find a general who is not a peacetime general, and I think it's same with players. So, you know, I'll give you a great. I mean, census is a classic one. I was like, who, who would you get in? I don't. Well, I don't know is the answer. But I do know you missed out on Tompkins and Williams and um, Harris. Like, who would you get in at Hooker? Well, I... Support for this program is provided by Chevron. Demand for energy is projected to reach a record high in 2023 and will continue to rise in the future. To help keep up, Chevron is increasing their U.S. oil and gas production, and they're aiming to do it responsibly across their U.S. operations, including their Gulf of Mexico facilities, which are some of the world's lowest carbon intensity operations, helping supply energy that's affordable, reliable, and ever cleaner. That's energy in progress. Learn more at chevron.com slash energy in progress. Parenting is an epic journey of highs (laughs) and lows. Therapy can help you navigate it all and take care of yourself so you can be the best parent possible. And BetterHelp makes it easy. Complete a brief questionnaire, match with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. 100% online and designed for maximum flexibility. Get started at betterhelp.com forward slash parenthood for 10% off the first month. Don't know, but I do know that you just lost to Matavesi. Um, and he 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 served in the bloody navy, like he he is as eligible to play as anybody. Well, he's born in England. Yeah, he's English. He's born in Cornwall, wasn't he? So like, yeah. w- he's born in Truro. It, there, there's a guy there. See the guy who's beating you. Yeah. That guy could have played for you, but you didn't want him, did, did you? You never gave him a shot. So the answer is I don't know now, but that's why I said before, like maybe more one or two cut players. I, I think that would be really really mm. valuable. Yeah, I, 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 I don't disagree, but I also say, what's the point in playing? What's the point in playing someone and trying to judge them in that system? And, and with the time, because you could have done that. So Borthwick, had he have had four years of fresh, and he might not get four years 
because this will go so badly, I can definitely see oh, that. No, I, I think he has to. But he has I, to. He has to. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I agree. Because they spent so much and all the rest of it. I, yeah, yeah. I I maybe, maybe a refresher. Like the if there's one team. thing we know, the RFU do yeah, bow yeah. to whatever but, whatever people say online and yeah. stuff. If, so cause enough of a fuss and it'll be gone. But if if Borthwick had four years and uh, there was some relaxation on the number of players who can come in and out of the elite player squad. I have no doubt that we would see... I've, I've actually got in front of me the players out of Leicester Tigers in uh, the 2020... 20, for, for the 2020-2021 season. Out. Out of Leicester. It's about 45 players long. Yeah, so... It's, it's un- Henry? It's unbelievable. You know, he might have been in a different year. Because yeah. I'm, I'm so not going to read it. Yeah. The other fly half who they had. Jordan Talfour. There's a million people. Manu Tulangi. Yeah. Kyle yeah. Eastman. Yeah. Oh, uh, Greg Bateman. I bet if you compiled those first two or three years of Borthwick, the players that Borthwick got rid of, I bet you're touching like eighty odd players. Tom Hardwick in that period. Yeah, t- the, the, there's so uh, many of them. There's loads. So loads. anyway, but the, I don't. I don't think he'll get the chance. No, which won't. I think will, will be but sad. I kind of think. But like, this... a friend, just on on another player, and I'm not saying he should. I'm not going. Oh, you should drop him. He's not good enough because I, I honestly don't know who else you pick. But like. Freddie Stewart, what has happened to that Do you man? know, this is yeah. an interesting one because Freddie Stewart is a raging dumpster fire at the moment. Um, and we all know he's a good player. We all know, although I say we all know he's a good player, we all know he's world class at certain aspects of the game on occasion, right? But the only bright spot of this England game was Marcus Smith at 15, and I am in no way in favour of playing position, uh, playing players out of position, particularly when you've got the strength and depth that England have. You should never need to do it. But it did seem to work, strangely. It did... It, it's Marcus Smith did seem to give him... And New Zealand do it. An attack... Yeah, they do, don't they? Mm. And he just seems to give him an attacking spark, and I thought, that's interesting. <coughs> He'll never... Well, will it? Because he did it for Fiji, and it's about the only thing that did work. Well, what, one thing I am convinced of in England's tactics is that they are going to try and play 60 minutes of... The most boring rugby you've ever seen, and they've been Perfect. they've been so ineffective at doing it so far. But maybe it'll come good. Maybe they will actually be able May- to catch the maybe ball. Maybe ki- maybe Steve Borthwick is keeping his cards really so close. close do you, to his chest. Do you think there's a chance of Steve Borthwick? Ju- I, I, actually, I do think this is almost certainly the case. Actually, just being a good soldier, like saying I'm going to try my best to do go as far as I can with this group of players in this World Cup because that is the right thing to do. Where actually, what I would do, because I'm more Machiavellian, is say, well, I've been appointed by the RFU, I have all the power, I've only got eight games, I'm going to feather my nest for the next World Cup. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that I've got... I'm going to take all the risks now, I'm going to find out who, who who my team is. If this World Cup doesn't work out, I don't care. Steve Balthwick doesn't do risk regardless. He, he didn't a Leicester. He's not... He's not no, done... but he did do that, didn't, didn't he? He no, threw no, away he, Yeah, he, he churned through he, players. Yeah, he yeah. had that year, but in terms of what was on the field... He, he, he. Oh, sorry. I don't mean it, he's not going to risk anything. No, but he had to find those players for oh, his I scheme. I, I think you're right. He was hamstrung by the EPS squad. Yeah, five players isn't going to be enough. Allowed is it? to change five players. Is yeah. that even for a World Cup? You're allowed to. Well, that was no, because for, that was for, that was, it's, it's, it's that was elite, the training squad. It's yeah. elite squad to elite squad. So I, there might be some caveats around the World Cup. Tell you a guy who I wouldn't mind seeing back if I was an England fan is um, Launchbury. Yeah. Although we've not seen him for several years, he's in, he's in but, good shape and he's working but, hard at Harlequins. Yeah, he's in very good shape actually. He's not a bad shout. And so, it's, yeah, it's someone like Chesham. Did you watch the O2 Inside Line this week with the Chesham comeback? Yeah, I love that. I love seeing the hard work and the effort. And it's great to see him back. Is he? Like, I guess it's the. I've got this question with a load of players that are they the player they were several years ago? Mm. Is Chesham the same player that he was six months ago? Given based on the fact that six weeks ago he was only just starting running on grass and he's still getting pinching pains in his ankle, maybe they've, they've pushed him too much to get him back because he's a Borthwick man, knows Borthwick systems. Mm. Maybe they would have been better to say, Big Joe Launchbury, you're back in England, you're yeah, 125 yeah. kg and six foot eight. Can you come and um, help? Help, please, help? Help Will Stewart or Kyle Sinclair push a little bit? They, well, they need it. 
the they absolutely need it. They do. Let's talk about that again's tweet. I, I, I'm still so I've not seen this. I'm, I'm in not, shock about this. I am not he, looking what, at... What exactly did he say again? Write us off now if you want. You've lost to Fiji, mate. <laughs> uh, lost to Fiji, which is not only the first time that England have lost to Fiji, it's the first time that England have lost to any Tier 2 nations. Well, yeah, and, and uh, hold on. The context here as well, it, it, this is what I would say, is th- there's a lot of people who spend a lot of money to come and watch England, and it's, it's not just the results... That there's very little in the way of entertainment, so I guess it, that magnifies the necessity for the results to deliver. And they've shut the top tier of yeah. Twickenham. Fifty thousand people in on a bank holiday weekend in admittedly bad conditions, but no one knew that when. Yeah, yeah. like it's it should be a sell- like in- Twickenham should never not be a sellout. Well, it was a sellout the night before. It certainly was a sellout the night before. Now that there uh, is he he, tw- he tweeted. Uh, and this was on the 27th. This was Sunday at 1.08 a.m. So Saturday night after the game, 1.08 a.m. Playing, playing Fortnite or League of Legends or something. Write us off now, all the best. Yeah, well, come on, mate. Come on. Uh, what does he mean by that? He's going to win the World Cup? Because if... I mean, I mean I if, he, if, he win, if they win the World Cup, they've proved us all wrong. They're not winning the World Cup. He, he then so followed it up with um, big congratulations to Fiji Rugby on this on on, <laughs> Cheers, mate. on a, a historic win. It's an historic win, but anyway, um, I, no, I'm, I, joking. I, I'm joking. Then he said to all the England rugby fans with little quotation marks supporting us, we know we're not where we need to be at all right now. We will get there. Stick with us I, through the I dark. Absolutely Thanks for the love. Loathe this for all the England fans in quotation marks. Oh, it, or a little star either side. So. Not quotation marks. Uh, okay, fine, yeah. fine, fine. Like asterisk. So right, it's yeah. like supporting. It's, it's, yeah. it's basically air quotes. Yeah. Oh, right, right, yeah. I hate that. It's like, oh, yeah, why are you not supporting? Like, like as if the fans are the problem. As if the fans are the problem, because they're not supporting hard enough. Yeah, they are. But you're just not delivering, and you've not delivered for a long time. And, you know, Ellis Genge has got his reputation of being, like, a leader and a bit of a character. And, you know, the more I listen to him, the less impressed that, the less impressed that I am. And the more I've watched him over this summer series... The less respect that I have for him, his attitude absolutely sucks. Oh, well, well, hold on. Let, 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 let's hear from the man himself. Because um, let, just yeah. some of the replies, someone said, Ellis, don't confuse frustration with a lack of support. You've been a rugby fan before you were a pro. Would you be saying, there, there, never mind, if you were where we are now? Of course we support our national team, but not unconditionally. Uh, and uh, Ellis Genji's reply to this guy called Gareth, I've no issues with fans being upset. I think my message is being misinterpreted as a dig. It's a genuine thank you. And I thought I'd reach out to try and show the human side of the team, not just the rugby. And then when someone said, hold on, but mm. you've put the stars around supporting, that was uncalled for. Don't mistake dismay, anger or criticism uh, for a withdrawal of support. These are expressions of supporters' pain and passion. And Ellis Gen said, the star marks, as in look like the asterisk things, aren't me using quotation marks as if I'm being disingenuous when I say it. They're to highlight the importance of the support. Right. Be, being misinterpreted, it would seem. So if we just take Ellis Genge at what he says, Fine, he right. was highlighting the word supporting. Like, thanks for supporting. I mean, <sighs> well, I don't know if I I'm buy that. I'm not sure I buy but that. But I'll take him at his word. I'll take him at his word. Yeah, he's always got a gripe, hasn't he? He's always got a whinge about something. Oh, always. So, yeah, he just continuously whinges. Continuously whinges. I, you know, I I, think I started having a bit more of a low opinion of him when he dressed up in Bristol stash when he was Leicester Tigers captain. I think that, <laughs> was, that was a particular be, low point for, uh, for me. To be fair, it wasn't Bristol no, stash. it wasn't, was it? It was unbranded Umbro. It yes, was it just, was. like, blue. But he was still hugging and high-fiving the head coach. <laughs> of Bristol when he was Leicester Tigers captain, so I the stash know, I, is. You know, I don't know how I feel about that because when you say it like that, I actually, I actually quite like it. Park, park the stash, but, uh, but then how do you feel about Pat Lamb? Hugging and high five. I mean, Pat I, Lamb? you know, you know my feelings on Pat Lamb. Right. We do. Just one other um, thing that came out in an interview. So it was only a couple of weeks ago, and I remember hearing like, "Oh, it's, the training is world class. We're just looking amazing." Oh, it's so, George Ford. And now George Ford has said we're not training anywhere near where we need to. Too many, the, I, too many mistakes. I did see the headline: "Too many mistakes in training." And I was like, "Well, Jeez. no, it's too many mistakes in the game that are causing <laughs> you an issue. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore the training." Oh, George. But if you can't get right in training, that is a bad sign. You know, maybe more one of the more promising things which have been said. I mean, I guess if you've got a problem, the start in position would be to identify that problem and be honest about it. So I, I think and this goes back to what you were talking about with Australia. I think 
there's a massive element here where actually the results matter, but it's the fact we're being bored to tears and losing. Yeah, I'm not bored. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. There's any boredom. The, like, I, I, but yeah. the, the boredom, is, like, because I I have no problem playing a pragmatic game. Yeah. But the problem is they're not even getting to play a pragmatic game because they're not even getting three phases together because they're knocking the ball on or not supporting their men in exactly. contact and getting turned over. We don't like the England defence. I think we can all be unanimous in our agreement on that. But the England attack, oh, my God. I mean, just watching them drift sideways. Oh. How, who taught them this? Do they... Uh, I know, I keep saying this, I know they're good players. I know they're good players. So they must know not to do this. Is somebody telling them to do this? Or they like Anchorman that just does anything which is on the, like, the teleprompter. <laughs> well, if, if the hero of Sir Kev or the man with so, such ruby intellect and intelligence of um, Wiggy tells them to do it, they wouldn't dare question it. They'll just do it. Yeah, we're going around sideways today and leave the rook alone. I mean, that's more... Much... Yeah, yeah. Give at least a 10-metre gap around the rook. Maybe. Maybe they're taking this... Yeah, maybe they are taking this literally, because I always shall leave the rock alone, which means I do, <laughs> like, don't contest it. Yeah. But my players have all got, like, masters and PhDs. So when I say leave the rock alone, they, they do understand. They, yeah, they, they get straight into the guard position. Yeah, into, but when Sir Kev's saying leave the rock alone, they're just going in all sorts of different directions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Run the dear. ball wide. No, 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 no. Pass the ball to runners that are wide. Okay, if, like, if we just, if we just get talk, over it. talk about a couple of other performances I thought two guys who I really really like really rate were totally anonymous in Ben Earl and Jack Willis mm. they did now this zip. is a strange one isn't it they did nothing because they both play in positions where even in Steve Borthwick's system they can influence the game they should be some of the most noticeable players yeah. on the pitch in, like in Tommy just, Raphael just in defence yeah just Tommy Raphael Han, Hanro Liebenberg yeah perfect examples yeah just work rate work rate work rate and why are they not before, I didn't, that's see, a I great didn't see either of them like they were totally anonymous like, and there's no questioning that those are two of England's best players yeah so, you know, we're talking about the premiership not being up, uh, be, being up to scratch well maybe Saracens are but Willis plays for bloody to lose just won the Top fourteen yeah, title. Yeah. So what's, what's his problem? <laughs> he's got no excuses of steel sharpening steel. Like he's been playing with the, with and against the best players in the world all last season. Crazy, isn't it? I, yeah, I don't. I can't. I can't really fathom that. And and the Fijian guy that Jack Willis was up against was a, as a sevens player that's just started playing for the fifteens team. Yeah, really, even better. What was his name? Now, De- 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 anyway. Uh, can we just but talk about? He did. He did also have. Uh, Valami Mata and Albert Tuisui, Correct. who are fairly fairly handy in the back row. Right, talking about Albert tu- Tuisui, um, if I swapped Semi Radranda and Albert tu- Tuisui <laughs> positions, I don't think you'd notice a difference. <laughs> like, legitimately, I do not think you'd notice a difference. Uh, Semi Radranda has got this uh, amazing bank account, an incredible <laughs> reputation, and I see flashes of his genius. But only the same way I've seen flashes of Albert Tuisui's genius, which is Albert Tuisui is a big man that can run over people and offload. That is all that Semi can well, do. In this in this game, his best bits were he bundled over George Ford once and he did someone else. But other than that, he's just a back row who plays in the centres, and we he didn't think do anything. he's some amazing skill. Well, he, he doesn't even he doesn't even have the Bottier skill set, which is he, someone who can legitimately play both. Yeah, because Bottier has played at top level, top 14 in Champions Cup. He dropped the ball in contact four times. He dropped the high ball. He threw a... a now, the high, bo- the high ball was uh, a... Um, he looks a, good, it was he a spir- good in his shirt. It's a spiral bomb. It's a spiral bomb. Oh, it's impossible he to catch looks it, sorry. great, though. Yeah, yeah. He, he does look amazing. amazing. He threw an absolute custard pine to touch. And uh, He got the assist for the assist, though, with a bounce pass. Yes, he did get the assist. He did, got the assist for that. And I'd also add, he doesn't just look great. He looks even better when, when the, the rain has soaked his Fijian shirt. I mean, there's no questioning he is a phenomenal specimen. I mean, pheno- I mean I'd love to look, look like the guy, <laughs> but I'm glad I don't play like him. If he was English, <laughs> if he was English, Welsh, Scottish, he would be. He would walk into the team. Why? He's nothing but a reputation. He's nothing but a reputation. It's better than anything England have got. Including Owen Farrell. Oh my word, Tim, you're right. <laughs> um, Do you have? He was playing, playing twelve. Owen Farrell. 
He's playing 12. Semi Randranda is playing 12. Uh, Owen Farrell would be playing there 10, is 10 no inside way. him. I mean, I might play. I God, that's a, that's a Biff partnership. Yeah. Who's the 13 then if there was a. If you think of the. Nayaka Levelu. Nayaka Levu. Yeah. I, yeah, I'd yeah. have him as well. Uh, or, or put um, Andre Esterhazen to 13. Oh, yeah. Now, let's just talk about Fiji a second. Um, <laughs> they were mighty impressive in. In some instances, yeah. Let's just, sorry, let's just wrap up England for a second. So, like, just uh, we sort of talked around things. So, and it's worth pointing out that, again, partly because of the draw, England could could England could win a World Cup by playing well twice. Yes, they only have to play well twice to win a World Cup. But they could also lose to Samoa and they, Japan. They could lose to Samoa and or Japan, and, and they probably will lose out. to Argentina. Probably will lose to Argentina. I agree with that. They might. Ju- they might only beat Chile in this World Cup. That c- it could happen. I don't think. That's I don't. Happen. I don't think it will because Japan are not. I great. expect England. You know, Owen Farrell will be back by then, so they'll be fine against Samoa. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I, I expect them to get out of the pool, and then yeah. they're going to be probably playing Australia. And I, I'd, I'd back them on a one-off game to maybe beat Australia. That very young squad. Yeah. Very, very young squad. And we're in. A, we're, you're in a semi-final. By which time, if England play well and they're up against New Zealand. Or Ireland, then I, I don't expect them to win, but they they could. And then uh, this is what I'm saying when I was looking at the trajectory of England rugby, and actually I think Eddie Jones overperformed, and getting to a World Cup final was above par. Although maybe actually the secret of that success four years ago was actually the Premiership was much better, and Saracens was the ingredient yeah. that made yeah. England got to a World Cup Isn't final. Is Nick Evans still in in the team? No, I don't think he is. He no, no. So what do you make of? And it's not a story, but speculation, I guess, or maybe the hope that the England players revolt and play a different way. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it, I think it's hope more than speculation. It but, is hope, isn't but, it? But There's no, I've heard, I've seen no evidence. No, before. we've got lots of people talking about it in the press and stuff, and we talked about it on the podcast last week because of what happened in 2007, the World Cup in France, where they would got you guys be by South Africa. If, if yeah, they, would you really? Yeah, I would. <sighs> I don't see there's a lot to lose, yeah, other than. Like, if that happens, Borthwick will not be there for the next four years. No, it, that's true. He won't be there for the next four years. The, what, the one thing I will say about that is that it, from the reasons that Phil talked about attack and defence, it doesn't look like the players are taking a lot of responsibility at times where they should be, and at least it would mean that they're taking ownership. Because yeah. like you say, Ellis Genji's tweet fell off, sounded tone deaf when, when we, we first read it, because it was like, that, that sounds like you're pushing back at fans who have... Because who were very uh, just disappointed and if they did decide to play their way how would they play it depends who's doing it well Cause, you've cause got to assume it's Owen Farrell if Farrell's right? doing it got to assume it's Owen Farrell it's not going to be that much different is it if Marcus Smith is doing it it's well, quite know. different Owen Farrell plays in a Saracens team that play a lot differently to how Saracens yeah, originally played do. yeah true you know, and if he goes to his old mate George Ford look you play 10 I'll play 12 just like you know I did it in Lions with Johnny Sexton. What does that look like if they decide to... Better than what they're doing now. <laughs> couldn't look any worse. No, it couldn't, could it? If Owen Farrell was... Yeah, if Owen Farrell was deciding how to play, it, they, wouldn't be, they, they wouldn't be playing like this. Yeah, you're right. It wouldn't be... Saracens used that tool to get them up the ladder, but once they were up the ladder, they, they branched out to different things. Uh, and by the way, just on Owen Farrell, because I, yes, I am an Owen Farrell fanboy. I love him. No. Uh, what, what, you. He, he will be regarded as a legend. And w- the second he retires, people will love him. They will absolutely love him. What he, was the term of this? Uh, Farrellista. Farrellista. Absolutely Farrellista. Farrellista. He's one of the England all-time greats, and I couldn't disagree more. And I, uh, he's, he's absolutely one of the England all-time greats, and he, I, I, I'd have, I, I would have said this before Borthwick got picked. But I'm absolutely saying it now. I, he, he would do better than Borthwick is currently doing. Oh, it's so difficult because I still have a load of respect for Borthwick. Same. So do I. So do I. So difficult. And the one thing I, yeah, I don't want to see him fail because I, I kind of think. Of course, uh, no, nor do I, obviously. No, no, what do I mean by that? Like, I don't want to see him be the, be the scapegoat for this. Yes, because... That, that's what I mean. I agree with you there. There's much bigger things at play, which hopefully I've, I've got across as well. I'm not, I'm not having a pop at Borthwick. But on the other hand, I, I still have to hold him accountable for not changing the squad enough, releasing the squad too early, 
you know, just all playing of Playing this playing this game plan when you don't have the personnel playing to the game, you. yeah, playing the game plan which That's the one yeah. that I'm focused but, on right yeah, now. There again, if you if that's what you do and that's what like that's what you employed to do, you know, he's, I mean it's not a secret what he was gonna do. No, it's because not. So when the RFE went to yeah. him, who was making the ropey decision? Yeah, um, well, no, uh, even we were sat here going, saying what he's going to do, and we thought he did have the personnel. To do you know do what it. I would have said when he's appointed? I'm just trying to think. What would I have said when he's appointed? I'd have said his style of rugby, Leicester Tigers' style of rugby, is much more international based than any other. They rely on territory, and then on their and they rely on set piece. When I say it like that, it should still technically be not only just feasible, but preferable to play that way. For an international team, so actually, why why it's not working, I don't know. Because I still stand by that. Actually, that's how I would play international rugby: territory based, set up some set pieces. He is the best in the business when it comes comes to lineouts. Why are we not seeing that? Yeah, and I I think some of that is just the fact that the the players there are so many times where they've just not got past two three phases because they've either just dropped the ball from a straight pass one out or. The mate has got disconnected and not supported at the rook. They've been jackaled. Turnover. There's so many I mean, big, like I, there are so so many basic errors that I mean we've hardly seen what Borthwick is trying to do. And yeah, that, that's that's one of my few things. Where I'm like, if they just get those errors out of their system, and we actually see the game plan, maybe it will come good. Maybe so one of my biggest criticisms of Leicester Tigers was the fact that when they had the ball in the red zone, they didn't finish enough. So they infrequently had the ball in scoring positions, and they'd get over usually using their lineout. Their lineout was mm-hmm. the, the best weapon in the Premiership that that, uh, that year as a launch platform to score points. But quite often they'd get the ball in play, and they weren't clinical enough. I wonder if this deficiency in the way that Leicester plays has just been showing up even more because these are international defences. Mm. Maybe. Uh, do, yeah. do you know, there are there are some uh, stark and very relevant comparisons here. Basball and cricket. Yeah, so I don't understand same, so you need to tell me about that. Same players, yeah. coach with a completely different mindset and, the, and, uh, and players who were average suddenly look... World class. World class, collectively. Because they bought, because there was a vision which everyone was on board with, and they stuck to even when it wobbled. Trust the process. Trust the process, and it it resulted in um, a lost ashes, but a lost ashes. Some, but some very good stuff. Yes, some, some very. Is that a draw? No. Well, it, it was, um, Australia retain it. Yeah, it was two. Uh, I can't. I can't even remember the, no, no, the last it, test. It was two. All. Last two. Test two. Was two, two. We do, the the series was drawn. Yes, correct. Anyway, point being, you got basketball, and also, um, do you remember when uh, Great Britain had the the revolution in cycling? The Sky Cycling team came on, and they just completely. Oh, revol- Dave Beresford, which was uh, Brailsford. 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 Yeah. Brailsford, yeah. Now, what happened to him? Anyway, let's not go there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but completely revolutionised and just came up with something totally... A different way to cheat. In- innovative. <laughs> no, look, look, innovative. Look, let, let, let's be very clear. Cycling is all about cheating, right? Yeah. And he cheated better than anyone else. Yeah. You, you can hand that to him. Let's go back. And let's, let's focus on basketball. Basketball. <laughs> let's focus on basketball because that's uh, rug- rugby cricket. Let's Hang go- on. If we got Dave Brailsford into the England camp, do you think we'd see an, an increase in performance? I don't know. <laughs> is that who was coaching Reese Webb? Reese Webb. Webb. Ask, <laughs> ask Reese Webb. <gasps> yeah, Reese Webb. Uh, do you know? Do you want to know the speculation on, uh, on on this? Go on. I don't know if um, it's true or not, but the speculation is whatever he took was given to him by the WRU. That was what was reported in France. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Now, if that is true, that's dynamite. But I mean, you walk around Cardiff, and it's eminently believable. <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, some of the jawlines of some of the individuals in who have been in and around the Wales teams over the years. Well, Genji right. pointed out a, a difference in um, <laughs> Charlie Yules. Yeah. 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 Look after, uh, but, um, just, after so, a trip so, to so, South Africa. So just going back to that basketball, I reckon. Well, I've never been more interested in England cricket for years. Uh, well, no, sorry, not never been more interested. I haven't been as interested in Engli- English cricket in years, mm-hmm. and. I sat and watched the Ashes, which I, so yeah, I, it's no, hours of the Ashes. Borthwick is is like it's like reverse basketball. Bauble is what it's, it's being mm, called, unfortunately. Yeah, basketball. You, I think you'll like this principle, JB, because you've. I'm sure you've spoken about this in football. 
like if oh, if a team scores two goals but then sits back and defends, why don't oh, you just keep, yeah, keep yeah, attacking? They, they just leave and and like basketball, as I understand it, and I do follow. I'm going to the cricket on Friday actually in New Zealand. Um, if the Manchester weather allows, because last time I tried it, it got rained off. Um, it's it's changing the dial. It's like breaking the perceived wisdom, particularly in test matches, which is, oh, you've got to go at a slow run rate. You've got to defend, defend, leave, leave, defend, defend, leave, leave. And play then, yourself in. And then when it's right, when the time's right, you just got to play that one shot just over the right. But it's kind of like when, well, how do you know that? T- like how, how do you know that I'm going to leave the next two balls and then defend the next two and then, yeah. then the time's right? It's like, no, the, the time's always right. Just go for it. And if that means you get out on three runs... That's what happens, or if it means you score 180, as several like many of the players have done uh, playing it, then that's also right. It's just changing that risk profile, and Borthwick's is that, but it's changing it. It's like turning the dial totally the other way to say yeah. we're just super super low risk, and they. If we're super low risk, then the game will be super low risk. Therefore, we'll always be within a score, and then we can maybe turn it on in the last twenty minutes. Somebody told me something the other day, and I believe them actually. So there was an analyst from a Celtic club, believe mm-hmm. it or not, who's no longer there. He's gone, he's gone elsewhere, and um, I heard that they discovered uh, in the England camp that England have a physical line of where the ball has to be kicked from. So different teams have a different line um, on the field. So I guess the better the team, the further up the field this line is. Does that make sense? Oh, so where you don't kick and where you run. Yeah, exactly. So like in the 20... So the All Blacks, maybe you kick everything until you get to the opposition 10 metres. Well, well, Aaron Smith, in this game, and I think in the last South Africa game, kicked on the... Tw- he put box kick up when he was on the South African 22. I mean, that's... Uh, that's high up. Yeah, that's pretty high up. That's, that's high pretty up. high up. So, yeah, I, I think that's really interesting. I, I'm ju- sorry, I'm just trying to think of other reasons both might, might, might be failing. And the other reason might be this is just like the very, very ground level of his, of his game plan. And until he gets his kick chase right and his box hits I right, he can't get onto the. Look. I, th- yeah. I think there's an element. So I can believe that. The reason I brought up the the bas ball and now what is being called ball ball, unfortunately, and I think yeah. you're right that it's just too. The, the dials have just been switched. The dials are total opposite direction on risk. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think the difference is if if I was watching rugby bas ball, I would tolerate losing to Fiji. Yeah, if they if they put yeah. who would be the bas ball coach though. I've got one name. The Basball coach. Ben Ryan. Ben God, Ryan, yeah. No, Blackett. Lee Blackett. Blackett? Yeah. Not a bad shout. That'd yeah, be a great yeah. shout. Yeah. Is he with Wales now? Oh, no, Scarlets. Don't know. He's, he's not going to be the next England coach. Well, I know that. Who is um, saying that they should fire both who can get? Scarlets. Yeah. Steve Diamond or Rob Baxter? <laughs> So that was in the press today Mark, anyway. Mark McCall yeah. So anyway uh, You boys have got One hell of a 12 days wait Until um, You play Argentina Argentina That's That game's already lost In my head It's, it's Can we Can we it's Basically can we beat Samoa And Japan Is the oh, question I'm, 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 I don't know 12 days is a long time <laughs> we, can, we, can do, we can do it are you, you were going to go on to say some nice things about the, um, Fijian. the Fijian team, JB. Yeah, I was impressed with that set piece. Really impressed. The, the, their the mall defence. Mall defence was great. The England scrums, couldn't trouble them in Scrums any... were solid. Line-outs, they fluffed a couple. Yeah. But well, outside of Johnny May's try, England couldn't bother them. No. Nope. Uh, the, a bit towards the end. The, and, oh, March, that's the one I was going to uh, mention. Try. Um, a lot was made of, oh, well... Will Fiji be fit enough to um, play against England in the final few minutes? No, 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 no. Will England be fit enough to play against Fiji in the final f- uh, 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 a few minutes? Yeah. So, I mean, where these boys play, let's just not forget. So, yeah, some of them are not uh, absolute top flight clubs, but a lot of them are. A lot of them are playing in France, and a lot of their conditioning is absolutely superb. And, and, and a lot of them are playing Fiji Drua in Super Rugby, yeah. where the conditioning is also superb. It will not be bad. It will not be bad. And 
the last thing I wanted to add to this, yes, historically, Fiji do well after a few weeks together. They've beaten France, they've beaten a few big teams at the end of a summer tour. So all this time together, you know, if they get into knockouts, watch out, boys, because I think they could cause some real upsets. Uh, they are, and I've said this for a while, because from watching the Pacific Nations Cup, they were focusing on set-piece. Like, they were focusing on scoring, driving more tries. Mm. Like they, It's been a, a key part of the game. And the other side to it, in Caleb Muntz, who did very, very well... Where's he from? Uh, I don't know, he might be Drury. Um But they've got an accomplished goal pick- kicker. Yeah, Fiji Drury. Um He's only 23. But the, this this game was three tries all... But Fiji kept the scoreboard ticking along. Was it really three tries all? Yeah. Well, I never. It didn't go three, like that. So it was... Ford got two conversions, but only one penalty. Yeah. Um, Munts nailed his, nailed his three conversions and scored three penalties. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the difference in the teams. Like, keeping go. the scoreboard ticking over. So they've got the set piece. They have got... Um, not as experienced as someone like Leo Leofano or Lima Sapuanga for Samoa, but someone who can kick sticks is playing high level of rugby and can keep this scoreboard ticking yeah. over. And isn't it ironic that Fiji and Fiji Jura, led by a man in Mark Evans, who should really have, well, be in the English game. Although I think it's even too late for him to rescue this. And Michael Alwyn, just to circle back to start the podcast, or last podcast, I can't remember now. It goes, goes on for so long. Um, he said in his, in his piece... The game will be unrecognisable in 50 years. Incorrect, Michael. Three years. I said five years originally. It's three, three years. years. We are on. Put it on, on the whiteboard. Doomsday countdown clock. Final, final thing, because uh, this is a mammoth um, couple of podcasts. Yeah, right. Um, final thing. I, I mentioned before, up in the kitchen, we're having our pre-pod chat, and earlier in the pod, that... Um, Charlie Morgan had done two good articles. Yes. The second one was a good article, but it had a, a clickbait headline. He wouldn't have written that. No, he would not ri- have written the headbutt. But the the headline was like, these five weird tricks to um, <laughs> get rid of back pain. It was, England can trouble Argentina in 12 days' time. They just need to fix these eight areas. <laughs> it's only like, eight? Only eight. And, uh, Charlie Morgan has basically pointed out the uh, just the eight facets of English. Let's, let's try and guess the eight. Let's I've not got it with me, oh, but right. I, I, Tell you what, I, what I could, I could things, tick them off for you. I it read would, it. It would be uh, putting guards next to rucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the tick. funniest things that I've ever seen anyone write. Scoring tries. Tick. <laughs> <laughs> Ex- tackling. Yeah, one anything, on one tackling. <laughs> one of the funniest things I've ever seen anyone write was. Um, one simple trick that that France use on their kick chase, but the guy that wrote it was also coach of Albedians, and they were terrible. I was like, well, if it's that simple, why why are Albedians <laughs> at like literally the lowest level of rugby that they can possibly be at? <laughs> it is one simple trick. But no, <laughs> we'll just use a simple trick, boys. It'll be easy. I'm still I'm looking at the draw and still thinking England. It's 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 quite it's probably as likely as not. That England go further than Ireland in the World Cup. Yeah, it's probably a coin toss on that. Yeah. However, whatever happens at the end, and maybe the weird bit is when I reflect on four years, England doing too well in this World Cup could paper over the cracks of what needs to. Correct, be. Tim. Correct. So, so regardless, regardless, you, you win. Regardless, you win. You win in three ways, Tim. Right. One, England win the World Cup. You win. Two, England don't win the World Cup. Uh, and there are a few reforms and you win. Or three, England do terrible in the World Cup and your YouTube sub- subscribers go through the roof. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which one do you want, Tim? Yes. I want to win the World Cup. I, and I, I would hope that Borthwick is smart enough, astute enough, and a good enough rugby brain to know that for some of these players, uh, uh, this is the last hurrah, this is the last shot. Some of the, some of the older ones, some of the <laughs> younger ones as well. So he will do that. Re- I just hope he gets the chance to do that rebuild. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think he will. I think he made too, too many mistakes. But yeah, I also think he probably won't now. Anyway, let's go to bed. Um, but b- before we do, what's your YouTube schedule for this week, Tim? Uh, 
I don't know. I, oh no, I'm going to be um, player posi- uh, position, player power rankings ahead of the World Cup. Nice. So position sort of dis- okay. distilling distilling all of the rugby that I've watched and trying to come up with a top ten. In, oh, a, in and every next, position. And next week we do our Brian Moore yes, we inspired do. team guide. Yes, we yes. Do. And if we, sh- want- we should all do a little bit of prep work on yes. one of the no, small No, we don't need to. Oh, okay. Brian, Brian didn't. No, but yeah, well, it's a Brian Moore inspired <laughs> team prep. We've got to come with zero little, knowledge, a little information as we possibly can. You never know what French team's going to turn up. You don't. You don't. <laughs> and uh, if, if you are kind of wondering what we're talking about, uh, sign up to our Patreon. Exactly. There is right. a, a very. <laughs> A, a the, only loser, long. I mean, the only losers in that whole Brian Moore video, aside for everyone that watched it, was poor old Charles Richardson. Charles Richardson. does not deserve go, that. Go to the Patreon uh, podcast does, to yeah. understand what we're talking about. Um, yeah. Uh, is, Charles is a, he's a good writer who really knows his... And he was he's he's quite funny. <laughs> he, a couple of times he just hinted, but, like the Uruguayan scrum half, he just hinted, and Brian just had no idea. Any names, Brian? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> any reasons, Brian? No. And do you want to give any reference to any game that's happened at any point in the last 20 years? Uh, no. Nope. For God's sake. <laughs> um, right, let the boys play. The United States Border Patrol has exciting and rewarding career opportunities with the nation's largest law enforcement organization. Earn great pay with outstanding federal benefits and up to $20,000 in recruitment incentives. Learn more online at cbp.gov slash careers slash usbp. You've been dreaming about the dress. Come find the one at David's Bridal. The most glamorous designer wedding gowns are now 15% off. Bridesmaid dresses that fit beautifully start around $99. Whether you need a veil jewelry, shoes, or even lingerie and shapewear. It's all at David's Bridal. Take 20% off outfit making accessories for a limited time. Stop by your local David's Bridal store or shop davidsbridal.com today. Terms and conditions apply. This episode is brought to you by Starfield. Embark on an epic journey through space in the first new universe in over 25 years from Bethesda Game Studios, the award-winning creators of The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, and Fallout 4. In this next-generation role-playing game, you decide who you are and what you will become. The most important story is the one that you tell. Create and customize your own character and become a weathered explorer, a charming diplomat, a stealthy assassin, or something else entirely. Pilot the ship of your dreams with a hand-picked crew as you venture through the settled systems and explore more than 1,000 planets, finding adventure and meeting a memorable cast of characters along the way. Set on a journey through the stars to answer humanity's greatest mystery of all. Starfield is available for pre-order now on select platforms. For all, into the Starfield. Visit www.starfieldgame.com to learn more and pre-order. Rated M for Mature. 